the center. And we'll discuss a little bit about that. We're going to continue to create oncology. We just now merged with VOCA, so oncology services is going to be very big in the future. It actually is one of the areas where we find a shortage of pharmacists who are not qualified to do. So those of you who do oncology, it is really good because the future is really big in oncology, especially down here in South Florida. Um, we have our uh, physician practices, which we are now layering pharmacists into a lot of our clinic practices to do MTM services, as well as help these pharmacists patients really do more than just help the physicians, but really monitor these patients who have chronic illnesses, including COPD. They're going to be part of COPD clinic, all kinds of different clinics where pharmacists are really becoming a provider for the balance. We're going to have infusion centers. We're going to create infusion centers all over from the Keys all the way up to uh, West Palm Beach. And we're also going to have um, our outpatient services and, and, uh, and our urgent cares where a lot of our retail pharmacies will be connected to automated dispensing cabinets for actual prescriptions. So the patient, what we're going to try to do is run rival what I call Amazon. You know how Amazon is getting into the market where you can just send them their scripts and they'll deliver to you the next day or within a couple of hours if you're close. We're going to do the same thing. And um, those are the things that we're going to be talking about as well. We have our inpatient services, our clinical with inpatient and outpatient ambulatory services, as well as we're going to create uh, our retail strategy for this. So for us, we're doing a lot of changes in our inpatient spaces. We're really actually starting to decentralize our pharmacists. We're starting to create more clinical programs so that every pharmacist is able to do kinetics, renal dosing, all kinds of work conferences, which needs to happen. We're going to have a whole antimicrobial stewardship program that's going to be standardized system-wide, as well as drug formulary management, drug information resources, and our pharmacists will be rounding on a lot of uh, actual meeting rounds for a lot of our tools. Um, Miami Cancer Institute already starting to be uh, centralized in two pharmacists on the unit. They actually already started to work hand in hand with the oncologist. We have a role of the clinic monitoring clinic with our specialty pharmacy, and we're starting to do the same thing with our. Uh, we're going to develop a cardiac oncology program as well as our BCC program, which is now actually just started and starting to kick off. Um, we're going to create. Retail pharmacy services. I want to put a pharmacy in every hospital. So not only in every hospital, but we're going to also be out in the community. Uh, we're going to create the meds and beds program, as well as mail order pharmacy and a home infusion pharmacy. So for right now, this is what has been approved by Corporate Pharmacy. We're going to create retail pharmacies in Miami Lakes, in Pine Crest, Miami Beach. And anybody seen that beautiful building on I-95 uh, with the pink pineapple on it? Yeah. That's the Broward Integrated Center. That belongs to Baptist. And what we're going to have in there is also a retail pharmacy and an oncology and fusion pharmacy as well. Um, so the other beds, beds that have programs that we're going to develop, which is West Kendall, Baptist, Maine, South Miami, and Homestead, and Bethesda has already opened, so we already have a pharmacy in Bethesda. So we're talking about those meds, those instant med program, this is what they look like. And so we're going to look at patients when they go to our urgent care centers, if they're prescribed medication, the physician would go ahead, fill the, go ahead and put in the order and actually this machine would then dispense the patient's prescription. So what we're trying to do is that patients leave with their meds immediately when they see our, our doctor's offices or any, whether it's a doctor's office or whether it's a few, um, an urgent care center, our patients will have their meds with them. Because studies show that when people leave the doctor's office or people leave the hospital and they don't have their meds, many times they don't get them for a week. And so we fix them in the hospital, they come back to our ER and they don't go back to get their meds, they end up back at our ER. 
So hospitals get penalized when your patients are readmitted before 30 days. And a big part of that is because people either can't afford their meds, people don't get their meds, or they don't have somebody to go get them to take their meds. So it's important for us that pharmacy is at every point and every turn that they have the ability to take their meds before they go. And then we have a patient assistance program. We developed that at Fort Rick, um, where we have um, a whole team that if you cannot afford your medications, we will research, get you free medications, um, and work with the pharmaceutical companies to make sure that you have the kinds of medications that you need. And if you can't afford the copay, we will help you do that as well. And so our BOS is our patient, or is our MACIS outpatient services. What we want to do again is uh, make sure that if medications are administered by the centers. They're either, whether you're on take home medications or through long term chronic meds, we're going to be part of monitoring all those patients. And we're also going to have a telepharmacy. Um, I don't know, a lot of the apps nowadays, and I've seen the commercial for Baptist, where you have an app that's called Care on Demand for Baptist. Well, pharmacy has now, we're going to actually where you can then talk to the pharmacist about your meds on our care on demand. So we're going to be hiring uh, pharmacists for that as well. Uh, so long-term chronic <laughs> medications, we have all the specialty pharmacy. We're ready to be direct accredited, and these are the things that um, they're actually going to be doing and bringing revenue opportunities back to Baptist. And then again, here's that care on demand that I was talking to you about. You see that pharmacy. It is where it says pharmacy, you touch that. We're going to create a call center where the pharmacists are there and you can have that conversation with the pharmacists on your medications. And so we want to be very patient centric. So that pharmacy, just as all, all our medical uh, practices are, we want to make sure that the patients in the center were taking care of those patients. And I'll have Bob talk about. <laughs> All right, I hope that was some exciting stuff, right? Yeah. Maybe some of you are sitting up there and thought, I'm going to become either a retail or a hospital pharmacist. That's what's been in your mind. And typically, I know that's kind of the two areas where we have what we go to. And before I start with the section here, just give you guys a little bit about my background. I've been in pharmacy about six years, and actually 32 years. I'm really young. Actually, I'm fat 55, but that's okay. I can carry it well, and I still have a lot of energy left. Some days. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was fortunate, even back in 1987, I went to Ferris State University that was up in Michigan. I did do my post back here, and I did the eight month, the traditionally type, you know, with these uh, you know, young ladies over here that helped me through it. Fortunately, I had a professor come up to me and ask me, Have I, did I think about doing a pharmacy residency? And I was like, what's that? Well, there's going to be a showcase today in the Detroit area of residencies camp. And I listened to that, and I'm so moved. Some of you, some of this stuff may even be, some of you are going to sit here going, what is all of this that's going on? So I was trying to put back that the job market was very wide open. You could, the joke was you could go to an interview in jeans and a t-shirt, and one of our classmates didn't need on the job. So I was applying to all these different places, and I go to a hospital, and they'd say, well, we've got experience in hospital. Even back then, to have experience in hospitals and intern. I said, no, would you take your grants? Well, we'd rather have something that's hospital experience. So I go in, I go to this interview, and I really wanted this job in Michigan, and one of my classmates got it. I asked her, I said, do you have experience in hospital? She said, yes. I went back to this professor, this is what I said. If I go to a pharmacy residency, will I be able to get a hospital job? That's how naive and green I was. I think he tried not to laugh, you know, because that's exactly why you do a residency, especially at that time, was to get a hospital job. But I had no idea. And after that, and then now still interacting with students over the years, there's a lot of things you don't know. And hopefully today, not let me set up for some of the opportunities. You probably didn't think you could be a pharmacist in a few years working with the on demand app. You could be in a call center where people are coming over the phone to you. You could work in, um, you know, in an, in an EICU, a telepharmacy um, scenario. I can tell you guys, you see Madeline up here, she's one of the nicest people you'll ever know, very laid back, wonderful, has a heart of gold, but she has a vision, and she will make it happen. And all this you see up here, it's, it's going on right now. Some of the future stuff is about ready to launch. 
So if you want to come aboard a place where the sky's the limit, I can go up here and say, Madeline, can I create? She's like, go for it. And she believes that you need people to do it. She's very good with cost containment, but not at the expense of people. People are number one in her life. That you got to be good to your people. So as a student, any of these rotations, the sky's the limit. You can see whatever you want to see. And that's what my job is to bring on board, is to bring all this together. Yes, at the end of the day, we want to have great pharmacists at Baptist Health, and it starts with our student program and our rotations, right? So you have a lot of selection there. There's some traditional rotations, and there's also some other rotations that you could experience. Everything you're hearing today you can be a part of. Imagine being at the grassroots of all of this. Baptist Health is on fire. The pharmacy clinical enterprise is on fire. And you want to be a part of that? Come sample it out. Maybe some of you are sitting there thinking, you know what you want to do? I thought I was going to be a retail pharmacist, and it's now 32 years later. And I and, and, and listen, retail is awesome too. There's a lot of areas there that we're building out. Thinking beyond that, the pharmacists where you're there, checking and counseling, you can be involved in clinics. We're going to have all our pharmacists all over the place. So sometimes when you think about the environment, you're sitting there, they're telling you the job market is tight. Somebody has to have the jobs, right? Why not you? So as you can see in our Baptist Hospital Miami, our big flagship hospital, we have all the traditional cardiology, critical care, emergency medicine. If you want to get that big environment, big hospital environment, it's, it's, a great, it's a great site there. Our Miami Cancer Institute, another place that's just been on fire, led by Madeline and Jorge Garcia, some of you. I see some students here that have gone to some of our um, different events. And I know that uh, Dr. Merriman has pushed up. We're going to have an open house on October 16th. There's 60 of you coming. We have room for hundreds. Come on, come see, come see firsthand. Um, so we're going to have an open house. But this has been state-of-the-art cancer care. Not, not only are we in a lot of life of Sloan Kettering, this facility is your you know, it's, it's gorgeous. And why not have something nice for patients who are going undergoing the most horrible thing that can happen? Cancer. Bone marrow transplant, we're getting the best. We're one of the only um, facilities in the United States that has the certain um, therapies for radiation, proton, all that. It's, it's just exciting. You will learn about cancer services from top to bottom, and pharmacists are outpatient. We're going to have pharmacogenomics. We're going to have, we have pharmacists in the clinics going over the oral chemotherapy, which is now like getting IV. And, you have, and I will bring you some of the best specialists that could be anywhere in the United States that are here. A lot of opportunities, bone marrow transplant, specialty pharmacy, dynamic individuals there. You're, you're integrating. We have three PGY2 oncology residents now. That is so exciting. So you get exposed to so many different aspects. Um, tumor board, educational opportunities. This is for real. This is just not on paper, guys. You will experience it. We will expect you to. We'll, we'll give you projects and things to work on your head. We'll just spin like the exorcist. Okay. <laughs> So everybody knows that one, right? Even, even though you're, you're young, the exorcist, right, Linda Blair? And, or you might have heard of it. Anyways, so ambulatory care, that's really, I mean, that's the rotation that we have. It's up there alone, but <laughs> this could have 65 different things underneath that. Our ambulatory care, which is actively building out. If you want to see patients, you actually want to go in. Some of you guys hear about rotations, and I'm not just trying to brag on this. There's a lot of great hospital systems out there, but you truly get to see patients. That is the forefront of Madeline, is we're touching the patients. It can be done, it can be done. In fact, it's more cost-effective to have pharmacists involved in the mix. We're the experts. I was just in a meeting, we're building up one of our clinics at our South Miami, and the doctor said, I fell over dead after 32 years, I could have laid down and died. He said, we need the pharmacists in the clinic. We cannot keep track of all that. We need you there. Please, I want you there. Five days a week, you're just like, Back 25 years ago, you'd be like trying to get in. We say, whatever you need, where's the book? That's so it's awesome. But it's because we have a great leader. West Kendall Baptist Hospital, if you want to go out to West Kendall, they have all the different rotations as well. More of a community base, or a, more, more like a family oriented type of place. It's a different space there. Awesome. It's one of our, it's really the only hospital that we actually built at Baptist. Everything else we acquired. South Miami and Doctors. Other great ones, they have NICU. We have a, a NICU rotation that you can experience. Homestead Hospital, who lives down in the Homestead area? No one, right? <laughs> one? All right, so you can do it right. But what's really cool is some people are like, oh, Homestead, everything you know. What, what type of, um, <clears throat> what type of, how many hospitals are down in Homestead? In that whole area, Florida City, Florida, Florida City, before you get to Mariners. 
That's it. They take care of all those patients. They do more ER visits than our big hospitals, more than Jackson, um, Broward, Memorial. They do 100,000 ER visits because they don't have anywhere else to go. So this would be great. You could just see a little bit of everything. And yes, it is down a little bit of waste, but it's worth the drive. It's a beautiful facility. Oh. So as Madeline said, we're expanding. We acquired Bethesda East and West, so some of you live up in that area. Once again, a very strong clinical program. They've got a lot going on there. Oops, Bethesda. And then we have Boca Raton now. Already a great established hospital at Baptist. Out of several different hospital systems in the area, tried to integrate with Boca Raton, and they love Baptist the pineapple way. And then what I'm really proud, corporate pharmacy, the administration. You want to work with me, Madeline, my, all the people that you saw on that slide? Come. We will show you what it's all about. You know, with a lot of years of experience, a lot of exposure to different things, ASHP networking is the key, guys. Now, as you guys know, I'm a very shy, reserved person, so it's really difficult for me to be up here and say these things. You know? But in all honesty, networking. Some of you guys have done a great job with it. You gotta guess, I was scared to death. On my residency, I had to call the ASHP president. I said, I can't do that. They're like, why not? They go, I go, he's the president, you know? And I called this guy, and I'm like on the phone, like, oh, hey, doctor, you know, you're not here. He goes, I put on my pants like you do every day, relax. You know? <laughs> you know, so you never forget that, but you learn, you need to learn how to become a confident practitioner. All right? You guys, I will teach you, you want to do a rotation with me, get on your roller skates or whatever, your blades, anything, <laughs> latch on, and I'll take you through a whirlwind of, of a myriad of different experiences, but networking is the key thing. You're getting to know us, you're here. In administration, you'll get a few time on. There's no other, other corporate, there's no other structure like this in the South Florida area. We're hit with a chief pharmacy officer. They do have one at Cleveland Clinic, but he sits up in Cleveland. You know, great system as well. Not, I'm not saying anything against the other systems, but we, Baptists, believed in Madeline Kameho. They interviewed her, and it's a very unique scenario. Also this year, we're implementing, Jackson already has this memorial, that's called the Advanced Clinical Program. Um, Dr. Merriman's pushing that out this time, so we will have actually an application process. Our Baptist Hospital, Maine and West Kendall, will be taking about two to three students each. You'll get a guaranteed three-week, or three, six-week block rotation, and you'll have a couple required, acute care and um, internal medicine, and then you can pick an elective, which would include oncology and some of the others. So we will have an application process for that, and we'll take some students. And what that does, as you probably may or may not know, it guarantees you to make sure that we get you experienced with and we drug formulary monographs. You get a three or a six or what is it? Eighteen? What is six? Eighteen, right? Six times. Okay. Um, sorry, I use my calendar there all the time, and I can't do math anymore. I used to. I'm back when we did the abacus. You guys know what an abacus is? That's a joke. I used to. Be. <laughs> Where we had to count in our sticks and stones, our neighbors' toes. That's from school. That's wrong. Anyways, I'll say later. But anyways, we make sure that you develop a mentorship. We. It's an added, added, added level of commitment that we give to those students in that block. So you can experience different things. It's a great time. Um, I always, uh, I was just telling, uh, I was talking to some of my preceptors today about mentorship. And sometimes, you know, like you've wanted, to, you're dying to do something. The big thing that I want to do, I want to see a surgery, right? How many of you have seen a surgery yet and you're okay? And it's exciting, isn't it? Like you want to do that, you want to do that. That's something you want to do, we can make it happen. Or you want to go see an autopsy, right? I go on, yeah. <laughs> or some of those things, or maybe, you want to sit and go to a board meeting, or you want to come to a graduate medical education meeting. If we can, we'll take you. And I used to sit there and just be fan, and just, like, just, just be mesmerized about what, what you're seeing around the room. Do you hear about being in the inter sanctum? We'll let you in the inter sanctum, you know? Um, what are some great things about our programs? We have free parking, not everybody does. I know, cafeteria discount. But also, what's really neat is we have an informatics rotation now. Madeline mentioned she created a whole IT team. You can see if that's an interest, that's probably a great career direction to take if you want something that's always going to be needed as informatics. Everything's computerized now. Bone marrow transplant. And actually, our cardiology rotation, you get to go in. Our attending physicians are really tuned to teaching. You can actually go in to see procedures and they'll explain what they're doing. Not only cardiac caths and those type of things, but they do um, valve replacement, all that minimally invasive procedures. And what's really great about those experiences you see where medications are at every step. Also, we have um, 
NICU. We have the um, early you know, um, pain management that we do, ERAS, that you can experience, our telehealth, telepharmacy. That is phenomenal. Our ICUs down in the Keys are all centralized up in, in Miami. And you can, you can take the camera down to the eyeball. The physician can examine the pupil and go in there and everything. It's just fascinating. We have a whole team, and that's expanding. Um, care and demand that Madeline was talking about, tumor board, sports medicine, um, corporate pharmacy administration, and pharmacogenomics is just about there. That's another area for those, of, for those of you that are nerds, totally like me, pharmacogenomics. I'm a pharmacy nerd, as you can tell. I love going to conferences and doing all this. Now, I think, say you're sitting here going, um, not really sure. I really am not really sure still about this. Bob sounds great, he's really energetic, but I don't know. We, what's really great at Baptist is we have what's called an observer program. Shadow. Back in the day, we used to be able to come in and kind of shadow with us, but now you have to be cleared and everything. And we have a whole individual, where she works up in the department I've been working under graduate medical education, that clears students and physicians, everybody from all over the world, can be international, or if you'd like to come on board for two days, how many of you have never been inside of a William Oven in hospital pharmacy today? How many of you work as interns? Pharmacy, in hospital, hospital pharmacy. How many of you in retail? Okay. Um, so some of you just have not, you know, if you haven't had that experience at all, um, you can do an observer program. And definitely um, your, your team here will uh, push out my information. I can connect you with the application process and try to get you set up even for a couple days. It doesn't have to be weeks and weeks, but typically about three or four days. You can just get that experience of what this all would be like. Um, so there's that. Then we also, our newest program, I'm really super excited about this. Again, the great leader, intern program. Hired paid positions. I've been in many showcases. In fact, where is, who did we just hire? Where, where, where are you? Um, is she not here, Angel? Oh, right here. Hi. Raise your hand. Stand up. It's Angelica, right? Okay, see, I remember. I want to call you Amelia, but that's another person. Okay. No, but let me tell you about, let me tell you about this young lady. No, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not embarrassing her, probably am. She has come up to me probably, what, three or four times at least, followed up, did it very appropriately, but she's asked me, if you have an intern, you have an intern program, you have an intern program, you have an intern program, I'd be really interested. And I know we were getting there, but our South Miami Hospital hired her. So we, this is where we're gonna really, really move in a great direction. You'll actually, through your pharmacy school years, work as an intern, okay? Of course, we have to use, we have to use um, students that are local. And we can, um, you'll work, we, you know, work every other weekend, we'll have a schedule. What's really nice is you're gonna start out mastering those technical functions, the technician functions. To be a great pharmacist, you guys, at the end of the day, no matter what, what position you're in, you have to be a pharmacist first. And being a great pharmacist means you also know how to be a great technician, so you all tie it together. We'll take you through that and we'll build, as you go to your P4 year, for rounds, transition to care and projects. So this is even before you go on rotations, and that's why you're on it. Imagine having all of that experience and at a great, great uh, healthcare system, then you go on rotations, then you apply for residency. No, wait, it starts on observership. Two days, I love it. Intern, students, okay. Resident, PGY1, PGY2, and then you come on board as a practicing pharmacist. Does that sound great? Does it sound more exciting? You feel more energized in fact that you have a possibility of getting a job now? And that's the way to do it, staying networked, getting involved with us. But this will be great, so we're gonna start, we're just finishing up the job description by November at the summit. We hope to have some of those um, positions available for you. So then also, um, Madeline brought me on board to work with our residency program. And there, um, a uh, healthcare facility such as ours should have like 30 residents, like University of North Carolina. Those are the kind of things, not because we want to brag, not because we have to, but um, I was just talking to Scott, the same way. We all want to be known only because I, cause we've started for excellence, not because I want my name out there or you know everybody gets to know the name, but we want Baptist Health South Florida residency programs people want to come to. It's on the list of the John Hopkins, the UNC, the University of Michigan, you know, the um, MUSC. We want to be at that same level. Right now we have 17 residents across the system, which is great, since we acquired Boca. So part of my role is to standardize and also add, add new specialties. 
integrate with our graduate medical education. We are, that's a whole other endeavor. We're in, we have a small family practice medical residency right now. We're gonna go from 12 residents to 200 by, uh, what's it, by 20 something, 20, probably 2030. But over the next several years, we're building our medical residencies. And when that builds, we build our pharmacy residencies, you guys integrate. And, and, and it's so exciting because our director of graduate medical education and our chief medical officers in those areas, they're like looking for me. They're like, they're, they're, they met with Madeline and they're like, yes, we've been wanting this. So it's exciting when you have a, a, a facility that is embracing it. I'm not knocking their door down. They're like pulling me through the door. They're like, so, and, and it's exciting. So we're doing a lot of that standardization. We're expanding our programs. And then also making sure we have pharmacists, pharmacy residents in all of our facilities. We don't with some of them, like doctors, Bethesda, and the Keys. So we want to make sure we, we, we build up on that. Currently, we have four positions at our Baptist Hospital. Robert Bolani leads that for PGY1. We have a critical care pharmacy residency, Heidi Clark, and if you want to do critical care, you definitely want to do it with her. She was a Nova grad, residency trained, knows the cutting edge. Miami Cancer Institute, three positions. Normally there's like one or two, so I was excited about that growth. We have two over at West Kendall. Homestead has one. South Miami has two. Boca has four. PGY2, and then this year we're adding on an ambulatory care pharmacist uh, position. We will add emergency medicine, internal medicine, neurology, cardiology, informatics. We're also going to have anybody interested in healthcare pharmacy administration. Okay? Perfect. The year after this, we'll start our PG1 for that portion of PGY2, and it will be a couple of master's degree program with MBA, Florida International University, is our goal. So we'll have that in place as well. We'll do work with all the corporate team and have that as well. This is our class, so you see they're for real. A lot of Nova grads up there, but we do get a mix of individuals from different areas, from University of Florida, Palm Beach, and then also our PGY2s, Mercer, Roseman University, and um, yes, this guy here, um, that, like Michael Van Olaf said, he is old enough to work, and he looks like a little kid. He's from University of Connecticut in our critical care. So we're getting some diversity out there, and then of course we welcomed our four local residents as well. And this is some information we'll push out. That's our website. And this is my information. Um, I know that it was a picture. <laughs> so we'll make sure we push that out. So what I thought would be great for the remaining time is questions from all of you. So I know I talked about a lot today. How's everybody feeling right now, right? Energized, ready to come to Baptist South South Florida, right? Okay. I think it's here.
was a madman. But I know how to do an ROI. And all of that that I have to discuss with you, it's already been approved by my hands. So this is not, I'm not going to come here and tell you I'm going to do all this stuff and I'm going to it. Number one, that's my name. And I would never want to say, I would never promise to be something that I couldn't So remember last year I started on the 29th, I had nobody but myself, and less than one year created a whole corporate team. And that's why I tell you about pharmacy. You don't have to just be a hospital pharmacist, a retail pharmacist, a candidate or do business. There's so many things that along the way that you can gather and learn because you're gonna have to learn more about other things than just outside of pharmacy. You have to be able to not just network. But every opportunity that is given to you in rotations, take it. Never say no to an opportunity because you never know where that opportunity will take. And see more because at the end of the day, how many journal, how many pharmacists may want to be a writer? How many journal articles are out there? You know, we we always need writers. We need how many want to do media that's focused on pharmacy. You know, there's so many things outside of just being a pharmacist that you can do. You know, when you look at compounded relief. So everything that you see there has already been approved. It's just a matter of me dealing with the construction people, me dealing with licensure, right? So those are the things that when we're building, it's already happened. We already have a call center. I already have the call center built in Miami Lakes. One of our corporate offices is in Miami Lakes. We already have a call center, and in about another year and a half, we're going to move to a bigger corporate site. I'm going to try to put that somewhere in between the Dave Robert line, where we're going to have a mail order for us. We're already in talks with everyone. I will tell you that Brian Keeley, the CEO of our organization, realizes the value pharmacy and medications for new patients. And I have been given the green light to create whatever I think is needed for the organization to make sure that patients get relief from a, from a pharmacy perspective. And for me, I'm very passionate about professions. We can do anything. If there's a sliver, something's happening, pharmacy can be either somewhere, anywhere in the organization. So that's already been approved. I, I promise you, a year from now, we will already see three stores open. Any other questions? Any of the other sites have any questions?
Absolutely. So the observer program is talking about you can do it with just about you can do it without any, anyone that's available. Of course, that's based on availability and your availability to make that work. But if you want to do something with corporate pharmacy, definitely you can attach that to myself, and then I could put you with the different individuals. I can be the lead preceptor, definitely. Probably would be one of the more easier, more available ones. Some of my other sites, you know, where you just make sure students, residents, we balance all that, and then your time can happen. It doesn't necessarily have to be during the day either, or it can be during the evenings, and we can possibly look at some weekends as well, so it'll just depend. And probably uh, next year, we're going to start doing a uh, administration, PGY2 administration. Right. That so that's it. <laughs> What do you say? What do you say to the pharmacy students and pharmacists in our profession that say that it's saturated and there's no jobs out there? You have to think outside the box. You can't sit there and say, "This is your opportunity for you to almost reinvent yourself," um, because there's there is a lot of opportunity out there. If you're just thinking, "I want to be a retail pharmacy." Pharmacists, there may not be that many, but you have to be willing to do other things than just retail. So, as a student, again, take the opportunity to see what else is out there that pharmacists play a role in. You know, I'm going to be building out a ton of ambulatory pharmacists to be layered into clinics. You need a residency, you need to have a lot more experience to get into those. But, hospital pharmacy, we're growing. Baptist, is looking to continue to buy hospitals all the way into West Palm Beach. I don't know about other organizations, but I will tell you, I'm going to need 60 pharmacists in the next three to four years. It's and a I, lot of pharmacists. And I think to add on to that, when you and technicians, we need, we need people. When you hear saturated, it's maybe saturated in like a, a retail chain or maybe in some hospital systems, but there definitely is those opportunities. In fact, uh, yeah, interesting, Madeline brought up about uh, writers. One of the uh, residents that I mentored a few years ago was now working for a drug company as a writer. That need is there's some needs that are there for those some unique jobs. The DEA, um, we had a, we have a manager that used to do that on the side. They'd fly her to places. She worked seven on seven off. Amy, um, at one time did that. And they, they couldn't, they, she couldn't get enough. They couldn't use her. They used her, they needed her more and more. There's some of those jobs with insurance companies that need you know reviewers and auditors. There are a lot more out there. You just don't know that, you know? And that's why it's so important to make sure you stay very diversified in your study and also with rotations, try to pick some diversity. I will say this residencies, when you enter them, you have to be committed to doing it, and it will help you definitely be more diverse in the job market. I'm not saying you, that right now you absolutely have to have one, but I will say that it's becoming more and more you know, required. So something to keep in mind. And you can do residencies, remember, beyond, re, um, beyond inpatient, there's also ambulatory community residencies. I had a student, I want to go to community pharmacy. I said, well, then go do a community residency. With Walgreens, or there's Meyer up in Michigan, there's different healthcare systems that couple up with retail settings, and become do a residency in retail. That's totally great. Thank you. Thank you, more diverse, because outpatient is a big shift, guys. Inpatient, we're really going to be all combined. It's not inpatient's going to keep shrinking to it. It's going to be more critical care, and then our outpatient ambulatory space is going to be more critical. So there, that's what I say to that. It's not a saturation. I know. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe there's plenty of jobs. People are going to be retiring. Is it as plentiful as it was years ago? No, it's not. But we still need pharmacists. We still need you. Don't, don't try to go down that road. You know? And I say that people, I'll never get a residency. But somebody has to. Oh, there's a thousand. I'm more than half full person. Anyways, there's a thousand going to match. Well, we don't you know what we want. Man. I mean, you have to, you know what I'm saying? Somebody has to get the jobs. And the truth is, here's the problem. I think what happens is, you know, when I graduated, I don't know, 96, 96, there was a shortage of pharmacists. Again, it was like, you could go out and get a job in the But again, there was only the kind of jobs I could get was either hospital or part. That, that was pretty much it. Um, residencies? Oh my God. It was, I think there was only two residencies in South Florida. And the VA. Yeah. They didn't go without a residency. Yeah. The VA and Jackson. Okay, they're the only two who had residencies. 
So you know what I did? I took my own hands into my I took my own, and I went to Broward Health because I went to the bathroom, because I went there uh, on rotation. Um, I said, you know, will you guys sponsor a residency? And they're like, well, we don't know how to do that. I said, well, I'll do it. Would you hire me and let me do be your first resident, and I will meet you in prison? That's what I did. So Robert Hell has the residency due to me, who started their first residency program, and I did a two-year residency with them. My first year was all clinicals, mostly oncology, ER medicine, with Joe Spillane and all of them, and then stayed on another year to do their uh, management residency. And that's how, then I became the director two years later. And guess what? I hired him. So he's been with me almost what? Yeah, 22. 22 years. I'm talking to him. I hate to start to end this, but we do have another class that's also okay. coming in. So. We do really appreciate that Baptist came in and you're Thank you all for coming for another.